Intel's first discrete graphics card, the ARC GPUs, are finally making their debut into the mainstream notebooks, such as the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro and Lenovo Slim 7i. This development comes after several years of rumors, leaks, and hints of Intel getting into the GPU market. But the real question becomes, how well do they perform, and are they possibly better than the NVIDIA RTX 3000 series? Stay tuned to find out. Recently, the brand new Intel Arc Alchemist A730M graphics card has been put through several tests, including synthetic benchmarks and real-world gaming tests. Even though the GPU is not yet generally available, there are some of the first user tests that have been shared with the general public. Even though the Intel Arc A730M performed well in benchmarks, its gaming capabilities, on the other hand, are severely lacking revealing its below-average performance. Both of these synthetic and game tests alike were obtained from the same source, which was from a leak on Weibo, a social networking platform based in China. The initial report was surprisingly quite encouraging, as the GPU performed at a level comparable to what was anticipated by the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark. It was demonstrated to be much quicker than the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 whenever subjected to these tests. The leaker then went on and proceeded to test the GPU in real-world gaming environments, which at that point the GPU had started disappointing him. The person who leaked the information tested the laptop with Intel Arc A730M in various games at two different resolutions, namely 1080p and 1440p. Regrettably, they didn't offer one vital piece of information, and we don't know whether or not Intel's Dynamic Tuning Technology, or DDT, was activated while the tests were being run. This is due to the fact that the technology has been a substantially negative impact on the performance of the GPU in the past, and that's due to it significantly inflecting influence performance whenever benchmarks were ran on the Intel A350M. DTD is technology that is developed by Intel, which is utilized by the laptop to facilitate the transfer of power between both the processor and graphics card respectively. Depending upon the activity that you're now engaged in, it extends the battery life, which is a plus, but the performance is significantly diminished, making it less suitable for gaming. For the time being, though, the only information that we have to rely on are the rumors provided by the Weibo source, and they don't seem really all that great for ARC Intel. It's important to keep in mind that you should approach the information that follows with a fair dose of skepticism, because all of these benchmarks could potentially change, that is, if Intel does go ahead and test other settings with more people. Intel's mobile GPU had achieved 55 frames per second in 1440p and 70fps in 1080p, both with the high settings enabled whenever testing Metro Exodus. This does place it slightly above the dated RTX 2070, but well behind the RTX 3060, which was able to obtain 80 frames per second in 1080p resolution, as video cards pointed out. For F1 2020, the Intel graphics card had scored yet an average of 123 frames per second at 1080p and 90 frames per second at 1440p. The RTX 3050 falls just barely short with an average of 120 frames per second at 1080p at the highest settings. Last but certainly not least, the benchmark for Assassin's Creed Odyssey had returned less than impressive results. 38 frames per second at 1440p, and a measly 32 frames per second at 1080p. The A730M was operating at 2050 megahertz and 92 watts while the gaming tests were being conducted. The GPU was discovered inside a Michini laptop, which also contained an Intel Alder Lake Core i7-12700H CPU with 14 cores. The Intel laptop, A730M GPU, and the NVIDIA Mobile GeForce RTX 3060 are available in relatively similar systems, so they were both compared. To put it simply, the outcomes don't work in favor of Intel in any way, shape, or form. The results of this comparison show that the NVIDIA RTX 3060 is still the superior product, outperforming the Intel Arc A730M by up to 62%. So does this mean that it's finally time to start becoming concerned about what the future holds for Intel's initial series of GPUs? Once more, this information was leaked by Weibo by a username GoldenPigUpgrade. The graphics card was not impressive in gaming tests, 
and this declining trend continued in the most recent round of testing. Intel's core i7-12700H CPU was connected with both of the graphics cards in testing, and in addition, their TDPs are quite comparable to one another. These tests were run on the most powerful version of the mobile RTX 3060, which has a TDP of 115 watts and can gain an additional 15 watts through the usage of Dynamic Boost 2.0. The Intel Arc A730M can only reach a maximum power consumption of 120 watts. The leaker also took care of the driver's side things by using Intel's most recent A730M supporting graphics driver, which was recently released. Before we get into this further into the disappointing depiction of the Intel Arc A730M, we do need to remind you that we are still in the very early stages of testing. Although there is a possibility that Intel's performance numbers will improve in the future, there's no reassurance that this would even occur. This time around, the graphics card threw its paces in various games before analyzing the findings alongside those obtained from the gaming equipment with Nvidia's RTX 3060 the GeForce RTX 3060 Mobile still does have the highest average frame rate at 110 frames per second, while the Arc only shows a frame rate of just 67.63. In other words, tests had showed that the NVIDIA GPU was up to 62% faster than the Intel one. However, the exact percentages still are going to differ depending upon the game. As an illustration, in the game Bounty, NVIDIA had achieved a frame rate of only 76 frames, where Intel could manage less than 20. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition results had shown that Intel came out on top, achieving 77 frames per second, while NVIDIA only managed 72. The situation then worsens in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, where NVIDIA achieved 404 frames per second, and Intel achieved just 135. It is important to note that DLSS can be accessed through NVIDIA's GPU, which is yet another factor that may work in its favor and put it ahead of the competition. Considering everything, should you be concerned about the performance of the discrete GPU offered by Intel? This may be disappointing to those who have had their highest hopes set on purchasing a laptop equipped with the Intel Arc. The answer to this question does depend on whether you plan to play AAA games in the future. And if that's the case, it seems likely that the Intel A730M is not going to be sufficient enough. If you are more of an occasional gamer, then sure, there's no reason why it wouldn't be adequate for your needs. Because at the moment, it's looking like it won't be among the greatest GPUs available on the market, and you're not going to find it in high-end laptops. But depending upon the price, it can be an affordable decision. As more benchmarks become visible, we are going to be able to determine better if the performance of the Intel Arc Alchemist will be best for whatever case scenario that you may need it for. But what exactly does this imply about Intel Arc? To be completely honest, it is just far too soon to tell at this point, and since there is just one source for both the benchmarks and gaming results, it won't be easy to decide in either decision until multiple reliable examples are available. The current state of affairs reveals that the performance of the Intel Arc A730M graphics card is going to lie somewhere in the middle of the pack between the 3050 and 3060, both of which are low-cost graphic cards. One thing is still unknown, and it has the potential to move the performance statistics all over the place quite a bit. The subject of whether or not a dynamic turning driver will be implemented DTD, if the leaker is correct about implying that DDT in these tests, the figures wouldn't be correct, but they haven't used it, and it's certainly a sad day for Intel Arc. So there you have it, folks. That's what we know about the Intel Arc A730M performance. Thanks so much for watching today's video, and we encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, folks, stay safe and stay informed.